Hello everyone, welcome to another time lapse tutorial. Today we are going to draw a bridge. This is Elgin Bridge at Singapore River. So this video is actually a condensed version of the full length tutorial that I have made for my patrons. So if you want to watch the full length tutorial, which is around 50 minutes in real time, you can support me on Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artists that you like. So that allows me to create tutorials like this to make more videos on my YouTube channel for you guys. So what I've done here basically is to draw the lamppost and the front of the bridge first. I do this by getting the proportion trying to measure the distance between those lampposts. So if you take a look at the lampposts, on the two lampposts on the left side, I would say that they are one unit. The middle lamppost to the third lamppost is about 1.5 units. So I need to keep that distance in mind when I draw. And I've just drawn the arch slowly. When drawing the arch, I would visualize where the highest point is. So if the highest point is towards the right side, I'll keep that in mind and then draw the arch slowly up and then meet the high point and then comes down. Because this bridge is in perspective, the highest point may not be right in the middle of the arch. And now I'm just adding little details here and there. Once you have the big shapes drawn, you can go in to add in little details within the big shapes, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to draw the vertical structures, the support structures by visualizing and comparing with what I see where those vertical lines are going to be. So in this case, there are only a few vertical support. So I need to count them and put them in accurately. I would draw the ones in the middle first and then work my way to the side. So now I'm drawing the vertical structures for the middle arch and the last arch right in the background. Now to get a sense of size, I would add people in my scene and add vehicles. In this case, this is a bridge for pedestrians as well as for cars. So once you add people and cars into the scene, um, you immediately can get a sense of how big the bridge is. So if your people, if the people that you draw are very tiny, then the bridge by comparison will look huge. And now once I've drawn the bridge, which is in the foreground, I move on to the back, which is, uh, which are the buildings. So notice I drew only the outlines for the buildings. For the windows, I merely placed some dots on basically the buildings. You don't have to draw all the windows because if you draw all the windows, first of all, it's going to look too busy. And second of all, it's very tedious and time consuming. And it's very difficult to get to draw the exact number of windows. So you just have to place some dots here and there to let people know that hey, these are actually windows. And the interesting thing about art is when people see some lines, some dots, they would quickly associate it with something that they have seen before. So they have seen, they have definitely seen buildings before and they know that windows are on buildings. So when they look at a shape that looks like a building and there are dots on the building, they would naturally associate those dots with windows. So that's why you don't have to draw all the windows. In fact, I left most of the building white so that the viewer can fill in the blank for, for themselves. So for the side of the bridge, well, I wanted to draw that uh, tourist bum boat, the river boat on location, but it was actually moving too fast. So I used a reference photo instead. And yeah, sometimes you have to cheat a bit. In fact, I have drawn this sketch, this exact same sketch on location. This video that you're watching, this is actually, uh, I mean, this sketch was actually drawn at home, um, just specially for my patrons because 
I think this is an interesting subject with some organic form like the arches and very some very straight and angular forms like the buildings, the street lines, the roads. So it's it's a good subject to make as a video. So when sketching this, um, I try to plan out in my mind how the how the composition would be. So my focus is on getting some white space onto the sketch. So the white space is uh, contributed by the negative shapes of the sky and also this part here, the negative shape of the road which I have left white. When there is a play of contrast, white against dark, color against uh, white, it makes the sketch look more interesting rather than just filling up the whole sketch with color which sometimes it works sometimes it definitely does work there are artists who paint their whole sketch with color and it looks beautiful but personally for me i like to have some white on the paper so for the buildings in the background um, actually for most of the color mixes that you see I try to mix the colors on the paper rather than in a plastic palette and then applying it onto the paper. So you may see me add red or add yellow first and then red and then blue to create a gray. Um, I think it makes for a more interesting uh, mix. If you mix the colors too completely in the palette, sometimes it can be difficult to see the individual colors that were used to create that mix. But when you mix it on paper like this, when the wash is still wet, you add in another color and then another color, you will be able to see the individual colors um, that were used to create that mix because the colors, they were not mixed completely. And because of that, your wash will have different colors, which is going to look nice, more interesting rather than just a flat wash. So you can create variation with your wash using this method or you can create variation just by making certain areas lighter or darker by adding more water or painting with more paint. So for the shadow side of the bridge, I need a hard line because it's casting, the bridge is casting a hard shadow onto the side wall and also onto the water. But this sketch was actually drawn on a cloudy, I mean the reference photo was actually taken on a very cloudy day so there are no strong shadows. So I really have to play around with the colors. So this is my thought and drawing process. In the next few minutes you will hear the actual voiceover, the narration for the patron videos that I have created. So beautiful granulation for the sky with French ultramarine and because I wet the paper first we get this beautiful color transition from the more vibrant color into the white of the paper and this building here is supposed to be much darker but it looks nice here we have colors blending into one another very beautifully and we get this shape here that continues all the way to the right side. So this group of building, we treat it as one shape. And when we look at this at an instant, we can tell that these are buildings. So even though they do not have all the windows, the shapes are there and we can tell that they are buildings. The tree there, some people here that I didn't color but we do need to add people and uh, cars into the scene so that we know how big this bridge is so if let's say the person here is like so small then obviously by comparison the bridge will be much bigger <sighs> let's move on to the right side so for the lampposts, I didn't actually color them as much. Um, basically, I want the lampposts to stand out against the background. So we have white against color. So in this case, they do stand out, but maybe I should have colored them more. I could go in with my pen and ink to basically make certain parts darker if I want to. 
so for the road here so the road has dried very nicely and we have this beautiful color blend now this um, wash here this color mix here is actually not very different from this mix here so this is sort of like a play on the tone on the contrast rather than on replicating the exact color so we want this sharp line to represent the road and here we have some sharp lines as well to represent the side of the wall for these steps that are leading down we have the arch here this is actually the gray the neutral tone that i'm looking for when painting the shaded side of the vertical support but i think it works here as well even though the colors are not exact but we still get the contrast so uh, when it comes to painting contrast is actually more important compared to getting the correct color so for the water we have ultramarine for the yellow i mean for the leaves here we have hansa yellow with french ultramarine so using this limited color palette we can actually mix create a lot of beautiful mixes here so that's it for this sketch if you want to learn how to draw if you want to watch more tutorials like this you can support me on patreon and there on patreon you will have access to more than 100 video tutorials that i have created over the years so check out the patreon link in the video description below all right thanks for watching today's video see you in the next one bye